This is Lindell Smith on screen right now. Hi, Councillor Smith. Halifax Regional Councillor and my guest this morning because his story is, is interwoven into this in so many ways. Councillor Smith was elected in 2016 at just age 26 and he was the first black councillor elected to the Halifax, which is the Regional Council in some 20 years. So there are many things I want to ask Councillor Smith, but again, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a beautiful morning in the north end of Halifax, and uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. It certainly looks in like it. At home, I guess. <laughs> at home, exactly. Uh, yeah. You're going to be there tonight. I mentioned you were you were there on Monday when we saw that first demonstration. Yeah, I we, hope to come go tonight. Sure. We saw a lot of energy. We saw a lot of urgency in in the group that was assembled in your city. Share your experience and your perspective on this moment and what it may herald. Um, there, there's there's two aspects of it. So you know, my perspective personally, uh, and what I'm seeing for for my people, is it's a moment of 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 you know reoccurring trauma and hurt, but also empowerment, um, because you know we we as Black people in Canada have seen these issues for 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 a very very long time. You know the since since we unfortunately have have arrived here, but at the same time. What you're seeing differently this time is more people who are who are not black, who don't look like me, are saying we can't stand for this no longer, and seeing the folks that are standing in solidarity all across, uh, not just the country but the world, and also seeing you know for me personally, getting tons of emails from people of all walks of life saying things like we. We will not accept this anymore. Um, you need to look at defunding the police and putting that money into social programs. Uh, you know, the feeling is also empowerment because more and more people are, are, are saying we can't go back to business as usual as a, as a city. So, as I said, a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of hope that uh, the time for change is here. And as, as positive as those indications are, what we're also hearing from many, Councillor Smith, is the importance is to turn these, these marches and these demonstrations into votes and to be able to right. affect change at all levels of government. You were able to do that nearly four years ago. How do you think your voice on the council there has changed things? You know, you know I, I, I'd hope in that it, it has, um, you know, the way that I, I look at it is is when when perspectives are given, do you see people react? So, you know, for an example, uh, when I brought forward the motion to look at a social policy um, lens, which is now a framework, which turns to administrative order for us, um, understanding, like at the beginning, some of my colleagues thought that meant, well, we're taking social services because that is something here in Nova Scotia and Halifax, the province is in charge of social services, housing and, and, and whatnot. But um, once once the understanding came that, you know, social doesn't mean housing or social assistance, it means people. It means how how we think about what what affects what we do affects people in general. And, and you know, I think if, you know, my voice uh, and others who, who weighed in didn't show that, that we wouldn't be moving to a place where we're going to really be looking at the social impact of how we operate as a, as a city in the municipality. Yeah, that social policy framework due to be coming in very soon, as I understand it, with, with your voice and, and um, thought behind it. It's, um, it's something you mentioned defunding, and it's a conversation that many people are having, and that we've brought up on this program a number of times this week, and we've talked about how Los Angeles has already made the commitment to go ahead and redirect the resources into more uh, community services and other centers, as opposed to in hiring and in, in, in officers per se. Um, since you, with you behind this social policy framework, I'm wondering whether you think defunding is something that uh, Halifax should be looking at. And before I, you answer, let me just tell you that you also sit on the board of police commissioners. So you have yeah, a, a yeah. position in which to have a voice there too. So where do you think the defunding issue may come in Halifax? You know, the defunding issue is, is a broad one, and we could have a whole other interview talking mm -hmm. about that. And, and um, you know, I like to look at it as reallocation or, or restructuring how we, how we, how we fund um, 
anything within a municipality. So yeah, fund, defunding police or reallocating is one aspect, but I like to look at the big picture. And I think as a city, you should always be looking at where your money is spent and how it affects people. Um, and really as a city, you know, the, the, the high level is always deliver services, pick up garbage, make sure the water is clean, um, make sure recreation. Um, but what about what about the prevention? Um, we since we do are, since we are in charge of police as a city and that is part of our budget. You know what are we doing for prevention? You know we have victim services. Uh, that is a program that could use use more funding. We have a community safety office who could use more funding, which works within communities. We have something called community mobilization teams that work within communities. Um, Uniac Square, Mulgrave Park, and North Preston communities in in HRM predominantly black, uh, historically black. And you know how could we put more funding into those places? And if it if it if it means reallocating, let's do it. Or if it means just putting more money in, and then we, as taxpayers, have to to chip in a little bit more as we go. I would support putting more of my tax money into places that are going to affect people um, in a social impact um, way. For sure. So it sounds like it's part of the whole discussion over social policy that uh, the Halifax may have falling into that broader picture. That's one issue right. before you. Uh, again, coming back to your experience on the Board of Police Commissioners, one of the things that we've heard from your chief uh, just in the last couple of days, and again, these are, are issues that uh, police forces across the country are dealing with, Halifax in 2017 decided not to uh, go with the use of body-worn cameras, voted against that, but now is revisiting that decision and re-examining that. Now, where do you fall on the issue of body cams? So I... Anything that is going to protect citizens and protect officers, I, I support. And I was just, I believe I was just getting on the police commission or I wasn't on it yet at the time. But the previous chief uh, at the time did recommend it against it because of cost and some other aspects, legal aspects. And I'm happy that our current chief is saying, yes, we'll look at it because I support, I support it. And yeah, there, you know, if you, depends who you talk to, some will say that they don't help. Some will say that they do help. Um, but I can, you know, for me, in my experience in the past, I know that a body cam could have helped somebody in a situation uh, to, to kind of give the full picture in, 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 I hope that we do look at this in a, in a thoughtful way and not just, uh, what does the cost? I, I want to, as I said, looking at it, what is the, what is the impact? And I, and I believe body cams is, is, is a positive impact for everybody involved. I want to bring up um, one other image too, because so much of the protest has brought to the fore issues of policing, obviously, and criminal justice issues. And take a look at, I don't know if you can see this, Councillor Smith, but this is something I that, can't. I can you see it? This is the, the Halifax police force was going ahead, uh, contracted the purchase of this. It's a half a million dollar armored vehicle for things like active shooter situations and natural disasters. And again, in the wake of the protests, considering at this point, canceling the purchase um, in that it might send a, a wrong message. And I know you've been opposed to that. Opposed yeah, to the vehicle, yes. you're you're, opposed, you're in support of the, of the cancellation. Can you tell me about this as, as as a sort of an emblematic issue, really, perhaps at this time? Yeah. So when when it initially came to us at the commission, and the and the way that it came to us at the commission was was very last minute, right before a budget meeting. And we, as the commissioners, we were concerned with that, and and I brought forward a motion that we that can't happen anymore. All capital projects um, need to come to us, and that was you know. That's another discussion. But what I will say is, is at the time I was concerned because it was around the time we just received the um, street checks report mm -hmm. and the recommendations coming out of that. And the optics of it were, were and the timing was terrible. But even if we, you know, take away the Wortley report, take away street checks, just uh, looking at what happens across the country, uh, mostly in north in uh, across our border, when it comes to protests and policing, I was fearful that this this uh, armored vehicle would be used in peaceful protests, or would show up in a community um, when when the situation didn't warrant it, and uh, that's why from the beginning I didn't support it. I had lots of questions, and we couldn't be assured that it wouldn't be deployed uh, at rallies or protests. So that was concerning, and to you know, and until this day, I, I mm -hmm. still feel that that. You know, officer safety is important, but also the people that are that we that are being 
um, protected also need to to be looked at in a way of of not not over policing. And I think uh, armored vehicle is 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 over over policing for sure. So this too being looked at again. I wanted to talk about some of the tangible examples uh, for this moment in time because uh, the whole issue of criminal justice, as I said, is one which is very much uh, being discussed coast to coast. But would you come back another time? I think that there are many things that I could discuss with you uh, going forward, and, and I'd love to have further conversations because, uh, as I said, yours is an interesting story and perspective that we want to hear more of. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. I appreciate it. No, thank you, and, 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 and I just hope that people take this moment and really look at how they can be uh, of help, not just to the people of color, but also folks that are not of color in making sure that they're, they're showing, telling them why Black Lives Matter. Lindell Smith, we'll speak again. Thanks again from Halifax.